One day earlier this month, a businessman turned social worker was going about a familiar and urgent task, looking for blood donors in camps crowded with Rohingya Muslims driven from their homes. This time, Nu Maung needed three pints, one of O positive, two of B positive. Among those in need was a woman who had suffered complications during childbirth. The military led purges and abuses carried out against Burma, Burma's Muslim minority, Rohingya over the past year continue to yield new hardships. The blood hunt, as described by aid groups and others, offers another look at the extreme segregation Rohingya Muslims face in their country. Rohingyas are effectively blocked from assessing the blood bank in the main medical facility in the western Arakan Rakhine state, where most Rohingyas live in Buddhist-majority Burma. According to two internal reports by a consortium of six major international aid groups, Buddhists insist that their blood go only to other Buddhists and the hospitals oblige, the group says. So men such as 48-year-old Nu Maung have to persuade fellow Muslims in these squalid camps to offer their own blood for about $10 per donation. He said he has been a donor 44 times so far. After making their blood donation, sometimes they can't work for the next few days. Nu Maung told the Washington Post by telephone from Sitwe, the Rakhine state capital. So we need to support them financially. Since the exodus of more than 700,000 Rohingyas in August 2017 in a crackdown led by the Burmese military labelled as genocidal by some US lawmakers and a UN fact-finding mission, the Myanmar government has been under relentless international pressure to improve conditions for the Rohingyas who remain. But one of the two reports prepared by the aid group consortium operating in Arakan concluded that little has been done by the Burmese government despite its claims of significant progress on improving conditions. A copy of the 171-page document was seen by the Post. The six aid organizations allowed access to the report on the condition that the names of the agencies not be made public. The report prepared in late September even questions whether international relief groups are indirectly complicit in continued rights violations by maintaining their work with authorities in Arakan and with Burma's leaders, including now tarnished Nobel Peace Prize laureate Aung San Suu Kyi. These groups must consider whether they should continue working with the government in Rakhine and how to reduce the harm they themselves caused by remaining, the report said. The dilemma is real, said Charles Petrie, the top UN diplomat in Myanmar, also known as Burma, from 2003 to 2007, who is now a UN advisor on peace efforts. However, it is too easy to walk away and hold the moral high ground. There will be no one around to provide services for these extremely vulnerable people. Su Yang, Myanmar's Deputy Minister for Social Welfare Relief and Resettlement, said he met with the UN and international aid groups recently to discuss improving conditions for the Rohingyas. We didn't receive any complaints from the groups about restrictions or segregations in the meeting, he said. Rohingya Muslims, he said, are able to travel outside Myanmar for medical treatment and education according to the law and if they get necessary or documentation. He declined to comment on the issue of blood donations and said there was no specific government order to restrict them to those in the same ethnic group. Since the August crackdown, increased restrictions have been imposed on the estimated 600,000 Rohingyas who remain in Burma. This has complicated the minorities already, limited access to basic health care, education and their ability to continue their former livelihoods. An elderly Rohingya man was shot and arrested while saving children from a drowning boat while fishing on 21st December 2018. The victim was fishing in a nearby water body in his village, which was close to the Border Guard Police BGP camp in Kurhali village of Mangdong Township. While he was fishing, another small boat carrying a few children were also fishing and a few moments later, their boat was capsized. After their cry for help, the old man jumped into the water and swam towards their rescue. While rescuing the children, they were crying out loud in fear of drowning. Drowning. Once the BGP from the nearby camp heard these cries, they shot the old man and injured his leg. The victim was identified to be Nur Islam, son of Ali Hussein, aged 70, hailing from the same village. Later, after rescuing the children on the shore, he was arrested and was taken to the BGP camp. Later, he was released, but further details after his arrest could not be verified yet. This is not a new scene in Arakan Rakhine, where bullets of the Burmese armed forces are not counted in the killings of Rohingyas after arbitrarily arresting them. After forcing away a population of more than 1.3 million Rohingyas to neighbouring Bangladesh by the Burmese government in their so-called clearance operation, now once again Arakan is under clearance operation with other fake excuses to wipe out the Rohingyas completely. 
ethnic cleansing phase two confronts the Rohingyas of who were victims of a brutal uprooting beginning in August 2017. Burmese soldiers forced hundreds of thousands from there in Arakan state. The Rohingyas fled to tent camps across the border in Bangladesh, frightened and stripped of everything. Now comes a report that Myanmar, also known as Burma, is taking steps to make the exodus irreversible. On December 18, Reuters published a special report including satellite photos, interviews and a government map showing how authorities in Burma, despite promises that the Rohingyas could return, are in fact making that increasingly unlikely. Many of the villages were burned at the time of the assault then bulldozed. New homes are being built and occupied mainly by Buddhists, some from other parts of Arakan state. The Buddhist majority in Burma has long persecuted the Rohingya minorities. Reuters discovered that the Burmese government is building some of the new homes and helping the Buddhist resettlement spearheaded by nationalists who want to establish a Buddhist majority in the areas. Reuters was shown a resettlement map drafted by the government that reveals many returning Rohingya would be housed in several dozen Rohingya-only settlements, isolating them from the rest of the population. It all adds up to a new round of ethnic cleansing, creating permanent facts on the ground to erase the Rohingya presence, also conveniently paving over evidence of the original atrocity. The Reuters report includes striking satellite photographs showing what has happened to the village of Indin, the scene of a massacre of 10 Muslim men during the 2017 offensive, a horror documented earlier by Reuters. The photographs show how the brown roofed Rohingya homes in the village have been systematically destroyed. Buddhist houses are still standing and 100 new homes of Buddhists are being built, according to the report. The government's resettlement map shows that no site for Rohingyas is planned in the village, according to the Reuters. Two Reuters reporters, Hua Lon and Kwa Su Wu, who were investigating the killing by the security forces of Rohingya villages, have been unjustly sentenced to prison terms on trumped-up charges by the Burmese authorities. Burma's de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi has said the government is pursuing the voluntary, safe and dignified return of the Rohingyas. But so far, it is not happening. In November, plans to repatriate about 2,200 collapsed when Rohingyas in the camps protested that they would not go unless granted citizenship and allowed back to their original homes. Burma wants the refugees to accept national verification cards known as the NVC, a residency document short of citizenship. The Rohingya vehemently opposed the card saying it depicts them as new arrivals undeserving of citizenship in lands where they were born and have lived for generations. The latest estimates say more than 900,000 Rohingyas are now stuck in Bangladesh, making this one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. They should be allowed to return unhindered and rebuild, but instead, because of wrong-headed thinking by Burma, their exodus and suffering threatens to become woefully permanent. Thank you.